Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. In this video, let's understand how we can build a multi-document rack system where the user can have a bunch of files in a folder and we will build a document question answering system around these documents using Langchain and ChromaDB will be our vector store and for LLM we will be using Rock API where we will access Llama 3.1 model. So this is the idea behind this. In the previous videos, we have seen how we can do this retrieval augmented generation or RAG with a single document, but we will understand this how we can do this document question answering with multiple documents. So let's get started. So I will be doing this coding in Google Collaboratory so you can do this, but you can replace this, uh, you know, with Jupyter Notebooks on your local machine or with VS Code as well in the notebook files. So that's possible too. So here I'm connecting to a GPU runtime. So I'm selecting this runtime and changing this runtime type to T4 GPU so that I can uh, load my embedding models in the GPU and then I'll give this connect T4. So the LLM we are accessing it via uh, Grok, so the LLM won't be kind of loaded in the GPU. So we are just accessing the API. So that's not required for that. So once this uh, runtime is connected, we can install all the required uh, libraries. So I'll run this first cell. So here we have Langchain community uh, basically for, uh, you know, using this uh, Langchain chains and text splitters and so on. So we have this Langchain community, this the latest version, and then we have Langchain Chroma. And as I said, Chroma will be the vector store that we are, that we will be using the vector DB. So we are using the Langchain integrated version of Chroma DB. So Langchain Chroma, and then we have Langchain text splitters in order to split the documents text into smaller chunks. And then you have Langchain again phase for the embedding model that will convert the text embed text chunks into vector embeddings. So the next library is Langchain Grok in order to access the Grok API to use the LLMs and we have unstructured and unstructured PDF in order to uh, load the PDF documents and extract the text from it. So if you are working with doc text files or any other type of documents you can install that corresponding uh, versions of this library and you, even you can use py pdf and other versions as well it's not like you can only use unstructured so there are like different libraries that you can use for different documents as well and finally we have nltk this which is natural language toolkit so nltk kind of installs already with unstructured and other libraries but the latest version is like giving some uh, errors. So I'm using like a previous version, which is 3.8.1. So these are all the libraries that we need. So once all these, is, uh, all these libraries are installed, we need to restart the session so that the updated libraries are taken into consideration. So that's the main thing. So once your session is kind of restarted, you can run this cell again. And that probably will tell you that, uh, you know, all these libraries are pre-installed. So you must do this uh, re restarting session, you know, in order to uh make this libraries take the effect so that's the first thing so we have all this library installed and the second thing that we are going to do is uh upload the documents so here i've kind of downloaded some healthcare related documents related to respiratory infections and other stuff and i have three uh documents here and you can have any number of documents so there's no restriction on that so this is the first paper that i have which is about respiratory tract infection or clinical approach and so on so it has like a few pages so we will load this uh, pdf the second pdf which is also like slightly similar to this so we have this broadly neutralizing antibodies against covid 19 and so on and then the third paper is this one so i've randomly took some pdf files some papers you can uh, use any documents that you want so there is no restriction on that so this is about the risk of respiratory tract infection and so on so these are all the three library uh, sorry the three documents that we have and now i'm going to upload this so in the files i'm going to uh, create a folder so i'm right clicking here and clicking on this new folder and i'm renaming this to data where i will be uploading this so i can select this right click this and click on upload and i can go to the desktop where my papers are present so i've just named this paper one paper two and paper three and and i'm uploading this so we will, we will also once we ask this question to the llm we will also display the source of the answer whether it's from this paper one paper two paper three or like what's the actual source from which the llm is answering our question so we will also represent that so i'll close this 
and then we have poplar utils and tesseract ocr so these are two softwares that we need so apart from the python libraries so poplar utils is kind of a, a software uh, that is used in order to extract the text and data from the pdf and then we have tesseract ocr so ocr stands for optical character recognition which is from a scanned image it can uh, extract the text in string so we need this tesseract ocr which is kind of an independent software and the libraries that we have like unstructured uses this in order to extract the content from the pdf so that's why we need these two things so in uh, collab you can install it with apt get install and apt install again it changes if you are on windows you have to uh, download and install these softwares if you are in ubuntu linux kind of uh, machines you can just use these commands in your terminal and, and install these so if required you need to add those in the path so it will automatically be added in the environment path and so on if not you probably have to do this but if you are running this code on collab so this should be fine you can just run this cells as i'm running and i'll also share this particular notebook and other uh, pdf files that i've shown you so that you can test that out so these are the installation part where we are installing the python libraries that we need and the poplar and tesseract software that we need so the next step is we are going to import the dependencies that we want so first i'll uh, import os so we need this os library because we will be saving uh, the grok api key in the environment variable so next thing is from langchain community dot document load is import unstructured file loader unstructured pdf loader and then from uh, langchain underscore community i'll explain you the purpose of all these things once i'm done with all the import statement so that it's it's simpler and then we have uh, again from document loaders import directory loader or you can maybe import this in the same line so that's possible too so next is from langchain underscore text splitters <coughs> character text splitter so the next thing is from langchain underscore agging face import agging face embeddings from langchain underscore chroma import chroma and then from langchain underscore grok import grok chat grok from langchain dot chains import retrieval qa so these are the things that we need so first we have this uh, unstructured pdf loader in order to load a pdf and extract the text and then we have directory loader so using this directly directory loader we will pass this uh, directory as the argument and it will like take care of uh, extracting the content from all the documents that's present in this particular directory so we will be using this directly uh, directory loader and the unstructured pdf loader together and the next one is a character text splitter from langchain text splitter so this is used to uh, chunk the pdf data the text data into smaller chunks and later this chunks are converted into vector embeddings using the agging phase embeddings model and the next step is we will be storing this vector embeddings into chroma db in a persistent directory so we, uh, we will kind of create a directory here and there all the vector embeddings will be stored which we will use later to pass the information to the llm and then we have chat grok uh, so this chat grok from langchain in grok is used to access the llama 3.1 model in grok via uh, api and then we have langchain chains we are using retrieval qa so for uh, you know having that question answering chain so these are the dependencies that we need so the next step is uh, saving the grok api key 
and for that i'll go to uh, grok so i've done this a bunch of times in my uh, videos as well so you can get this in an easy way so just go to grok.com and you will be having this developers thing and inside that you can go to this start building so you uh, should have created a account here so you can use your google account to create it and you don't need any payment information credit card details or anything in order to access the free tier so there are like free tiers using which you can access the model but if you are working with olama and other stuff it's it's kind of simple you just have to replace this langchain grok with uh, langchain community as this langchain community dot llms and within that you can access olama and chat olama so you can try that as well if you don't want to use grok and if you want to have a local system so that's possible too but for grok you can come to this uh, console.grok.com slash playground and in this api key after you have created your account you can create a new api key so i'll, I'll maybe mention this as uh, youtube uh video key or something okay and you will see this key so copy that and paste it here so this should be paste in a variable let's say grok so grok api key is equal to within quotes paste your api key i'll run this and next step is saving this uh key value in your environment variable so you can say os dot environ and it should be grok api key and we have to pass this so when we access this chat grok using langchain grok it will look for the api key in this particular environment variable key so you shouldn't change this name so it should be grok api key with all those underscores and uppercase letters so that shouldn't change so i'll run this so the next step is uh, we need to load this documents so i'll say loader is equal to directory loader that we have imported here and within that pass the name of the directory so the name of the directory is data right so you can just say directory loader within quotes say data and forward slash and then within glob you can say dot slash uh, asterisk dot pdf so I, i'll explain you the purpose of this and the final thing that you need is loader parameter so loader parameter loader class is equal to unstructured pdf loader that we have imported above hmm. let me remove this one and paste it okay so we have this data directory uh, this data name is basically coming from the directory name that we have created if you if you use a different name mention that name here and glob when i say glob dot slash asterisk dot pdf it means consider all the pdf files within this directory so that's the purpose of this asterisk sign and dot pdf so and then the loader class is unstructured pdf loader if you are using a pi pdf for different kind of file loaders you can mention that over here so here we are working with only with the pdf file so you can mention this particular function and say documents is equal to loader dot load so this will read the documents and extract the text from this documents and save this in the variable called as documents so depending upon the number of files that you have and depending upon the size of those files this may take some time so it has to go through all the text and extract the content so this is kind of a time consuming process again the ones that we have are like shorter pdf and only like three pdf documents so it may not take that much time but again this is kind of subjective so in the meantime it runs we can move to the other aspects so this kind of took 20 seconds as i said if you have more documents this may take a lot of time so the next step is uh, splitting this documents data this text data into smaller chunks so you can also print and look at this documents so we have this document metadata first one is the data paper one pdf page content and so on so if you look at the length of this so this is basically a list data type and within that you have this document data and so on so th there are totally three documents which is coming from the number of documents that we have so if you want to look at let's say the third document you can just say length oh sorry not length of documents but you have to say this as this so print documents of three oh sorry so we have only two so you have to say so we have three so the index should be two so this is the uh, extracted content of the third document so this is how we can do this thing you can scroll to the top oh sorry i think i've deleted the cells i can press ctrl mz to retrieve that let me go to the top 
Mm. So we have page content name and so on. So this is a we can print this. So the next step is this is a larger text, right? So we won't be passing this entire text to the LLM and getting a response. So instead, we will chunk this, store this chunks in the vector DB after converting those text chunks into vector embeddings. Do a similarity search with the question and then pass the question and only the relevant content to the LLM as a context window and get a response. So all this I've explained in my rad conceptual video. You can refer to that one as well. So here I'll say text splitter is equal to character text splitter and and then you have this chunk size and other details that you can use so let's say the chunk size is oh. chunk size is equal to let's say 2000 this you can play around with this like it depends on what's the ideal uh, chunk size and chunk overlap so you can like try different values here so yeah chunk overlap is equal to let's say 500 and then we have to split this so i'll say text chunks is equal to text splitter that we have created dot split documents as this is a document data type and within that pass your documents that you you got from this loader so let's run this so this will create those text chunks for all this data so you can ignore this warning so sometimes the chunk may have like a larger chunk than this so you can maybe ignore this it's not like that important so next is we are going to create a persis directory so persis directory to store your uh, vector embedding so uh, maybe i'll name this as uh, doc chroma db so this will create when we uh, execute this via a chroma db thing so this will create a directory here so we have data sample data and so on right so this will create a directory called as doc chroma db when we use a uh, chroma db thing that we have imported from here so the lang chain chroma and all these text chunks will be converted into vector embeddings and it will be stored there so for that the other thing that we need is the vector embedding model vector embedding model so i can say embedding is equal to hugging phase embedding that we have imported from lang chain hugging phase so i'll run this so this will download the model is i think around 400 uh, mb or something so you can you also have like different models that performs better larger models and smaller models and uh, different variations in it so you can try with different uh, embedding models as well so yeah this is the embedding model that we have and then i'll say vector store or vector db you can name this anything maybe i'll call this as vector store vector store is equal to chroma that we have imported from langchain chroma dot from documents and then say the first parameter is documents is equal to uh, text chunks that we have created so the next thing that we have to give is the embedding model which is the same thing embedding is the name that we have created as well and finally we have persis directory is equal to the same we have given the same name so we can just use this so these are the details so using this chunks we are converting those chunks into vector embeddings using the embedding model and storing this in the persis directory and here this is the place where we are passing the text chunks so pay attention here so this will create a directory called as uh, doc chroma db after we execute this so if you are not seeing this you can just refresh this in order to see this right so you can click on this refresh and now you can see this doc chroma db that has this folder chroma sql light and so on so this is the vector store that we have or the vector db that we have and uh, the uh, you know good thing about this is you don't have to run this every time so once you have this folder that has this chroma db vector embeddings you can you know uh, connect to this uh, via a retriever and you can like, you can work on it so you don't have to do this previous steps of using this unstructured splitting this text uh, creating vector embeddings and so on so you don't have to do this because all these are already saved in this directory so all the all you need is this particular directory so you can access this and you can work on this so i've made a previous video on just using chroma db for your vector store i'll probably give the link of that video in this video description so there i've explained you how you can first build this chroma db thing and instead of doing all these things again you can just connect to this directory 
uh, via Langchain functions and you can just ask questions on it. So you can skip the previous part once you have done this. So you can refer to that video probably. So I have explained it there. So I'm skipping that for now. So here we have uh, the things that we have done so far is read the document, extract the text, split the text into smaller chunks and then convert those into vector embeddings and store this in the uh, Chroma DB persist directory thing. And after that, we have to load this into a retriever. So I can say retriever is equal to vector store dot as retriever and put a parenthesis so there are like different uh, arguments that you can use in order to uh, change the way your retriever works but for simplicity i'll just go with the default ones so vector store dot as retriever so vector store is the one that we have created here i'll run this so now we can uh, load the llm so i can say llm is equal to chat grok that we have imported and within that i can say model is equal to llama 3.1 is the model that i'm going to use so for that you can again come to this rock cloud and you will see this documentation and it has the list of models that you have so you have like all the open source models and other models that you can use so you have gamma 2 9 billion 7 billion and so on but i'm going to use the uh, 8 billion instant version so you have this uh, 8 billion instance so you have to copy the name in this model id so i'll copy this and paste it over here so model is equal to llama 3.1 8 billion instant and then I'll say temperature is equal to zero. So again, I've explained this temperature parameter several times, but I'll anyway do this again. So the temperature value ranges from zero to one. If you ask the same question again and again, if the temperature value is closer to zero, it's going to give you similar answers every time. But if the value is closer to one, in that case, for the same question, it will kind of give you slightly different answer. So that's about this temperature parameter, which is one of the hyper parameters there are also like other parameters uh, top k and other details but we will discuss about that later so this is how you can load this chat grok using this uh, langchain grok and this is where you will need this api key so it will automatically look for this api key in this environment variable or the other way is you can also pass this here but the ideal way to do this is right so you also shouldn't put your api keys like this in your code so you can just have a config.json or an environment file named as env and load that directly so that's like the better approach so here what you can do is create a config.json file and read this json file from python load the api key and then save this to environment variable so that you're not displaying your api key in the code so that's how we should do it do it so here i'll run this llm thing and the next thing that we are going to do is create a chain and the chain that we are going to use is uh, retrieval QA which is used for question answering thing. So I'll, here I'll say QA chain is equal to retrieval QA dot from chain type. And here we have to pass the parameters LLM, the retriever, the vector database and so on. So I'll say LLM and a chain type there are like different types that we can use so yeah let me type in chain type is equal to stuff so there are like refine map reduce and so on so let me go with stuff and then retriever is equal to we have to pass that retriever that we have created which is from this vector store so that's the other thing and then you can also say return source document so that we can understand like where is the source document coming from so that's the reason for this so say return source documents is equal to true so run this so this is a qa chain so we have retrieval qa and to that particular function from chain type we are passing the llm which is the grok llm we have chain type as stuff uh, retriever as retriever and return source documents so these are the things that we need so now we can just build the query and get the response from it and so on so here i'll say query is equal to uh let me go to this i have some previous question that i've tried this maybe i'll just show those questions to you you can also try uh with with other questions as well so there was something related to the uh, details on this thing yeah so delineating the clinical syndrome let me just copy this particular text and so basically i wanted to understand or see if the llm can answer the content from this particular paragraph so i'll just say uh, what does the document say about i'll just copy this here it's in uppercase but that's okay 
and the response should be QA chain that we have created before dot invoke and within that you can create a dictionary and say query is the key and the value should be the question that we have so you can just paste this one you can name this question or query but this key should be query this shouldn't change so query let's run this and print the response so we got the response the advantage of grok is that the response are like lightning fast so it's like take very little amount of time to give you the response i'll print this one so it says the query is what does the document say about this particular thing and the results as some information right so in order to get this uh, final output so you can just say uh, print response of result so result is the key where your answer will be so you can just print this response result so it says the document states that it is useful to divide this respiratory tract infection into upper and lower tracks and when it's upper tract infection it covers like these parts so we have otitis media master tortoise probably i'm not pronouncing it rightly but these are the details and for lower tract infection we have like tracheobronchitis bronchiolitis and, and we have like pneumonia and those things so you can verify this over here so this is the first paper that we had right so i've named this as paper one as you can see so it says that uh upper tract infection with these particular parts and the lower tract infection with these things so which is like pretty accurate so that's working and uh, other things that we can skip now as I said we need to understand the source of this data so you if you want to look at the entire structure of this response you can scroll to the side and look at it but if you want to just look at the source you can get it from uh, response and within that say source documents and zero dot metadata so all these are stored in the vector db when we kind of store that and, and all those metadata are extracted when we load this via the unstructured thing so we can use that one so say source so this is where your source document uh, will be present so it's basically it gives you where this particular context has been taken from so you can print this and it will say now oh, string object has no attribute metadata so it oh okay i should put a square bracket here Hmm. Closing parenthesis. Okay, let's see. So it says data paper three. Oh, it says it's from paper three. Let me just look at this one. I think there is an issue here. Maybe I'll run this again. So the answer is right, but it says it's it's from paper three. So that's probably not accurate. But the answer is right, so let me check. Let me load this retriever again. Hmm, this is kind of doubtful so this should have said paper one but maybe let's try this for another question as well one second so let me just copy all these details query and i can just say print response of result and print I mean, let's let's put a breaking point kind of a thing and say just printing stars and then say the source is this thing sources the one that we have over here I'm just trying to see if there are anything similar context in the third paper as well. So it doesn't seem to be. So we can close this one and say response. So the question should be something related to this. This is paper two. So I think there is something going off in, in locating the source properly, but the context is right. So I'll say, what does the document say about 
receptor binding domain so it says okay here it says the source properly so the document discuss uh, receptor binding of sars cov2 and, and so on so location of structure and so on so here uh, we can come back to this receptor binding so it says binding near the neck and shoulders of the rbd of either footprints ac2 binding and so on so you can it's kind of similar to it but it says that there are uh, different places where the document talks about this particular receptor binding domain but we can see that the source is proper and, and the answer is like slightly what probably we are looking for so that's proper here so the only thing that's not working correctly i would say is like the source documents so maybe what i can do is uh, pass this retriever again i think so something is going off when we kind of have this metadata and working with it so i can try this once again so let me just run this again or let me load the vector db again it says paper 3 i think something should have gone wrong uh, when we have this you know directory loader and this unstructured thing so let's check i'll restart the session and probably run this in so we don't have to this may not take some time because the libraries are already installed so we don't this may also not take some time so i'll run the other cells we have persis directory so maybe i'll create another directory for this so instead of doc chroma db i'll say uh, doc db just doc db so that we have like another copy of this so i'm just running this one So the document db has been created. So QA chain. So the answer is right, but again it says paper three. Interesting. So maybe let's check for this one. So it says paper two, which is accurate. So here I'll copy this JSON and let's look at look at the issue. So here we can search for metadata. So okay what does the document say about this thing so the document says it's you have to divide it divide this but it says the source is from this particular pdf page content and so on and then here we have data pdf1 hmm, this is also accurate just the kind of answer that we are getting but this says source 3 chronic infection most of the condition exist in so here the source is paper one so page content chronic disease is usually caused by fungi slow growing things the lower track can be divided into track activities So I think I've located like what's going wrong. So here we are in the code, right? So we are getting this response from this response of result and kind of printing the first source documents that we are seeing. So we have response of source documents zero and the metadata is like so. So this is what we are printing. But if you look at the entire response, right? So these are all the different uh, data that we are getting. So this is the query. This is the result that we are getting. And these are the relevant information that has been taken from the Victor DB thing like the actual text that has been taken so if you see this uh, we have this result correctly but if you look at the metadata source information so we have this document metadata source of data paper 3.pdf this is the page content that has been sent to it that this is what you're getting something related to this particular question so let's say that this is the question that we have asked and after doing this vector similarity search it may say that in this particular document so this is the data 
paper 3 dot pdf this particular paper and this is the relevant information for this question and for paper 1 this is the relevant information so what you are seeing here so from this document until this part so it, it talks about again delineating the clinical syndrome all those answers this is the exact answer that we are getting and the other metadata information we have is from this paper 1 pdf page content and so on so here we are correctly printing the result but it seems like printing the first metadata source is not the right way. So the actual data is actually taken from the response is taken from this as we can see the result as the data from this particular section. So it seems like we have to find a way to understand, uh, you know, which is the source for this, for this, you know, result that we are seeing over here. So prob probably like this source thing, the way to get this source is not the right way. So maybe I'll just remove this, this one and this remove source as well. But the response that we are getting, the result is that's right. So nothing wrong in that. So maybe I'll run this again. Yeah, so mm, okay, I have to run this question again. Okay, so but still we have to figure out how we can print that source. So what I'll probably do is you can just try until this part. So the next video that we'll be discussing is how to build a streamlit user interface, basically a chatbot where the user can have a conversation with this particular set of documents. So again, it's like a, a document, multi-document chatbot kind of a thing. It's, it's what we are going to build. In that, I'll maybe add this part where we can understand how to locate the exact source from which we are getting this result. So we are getting this entire thing, but the prob problem is like we are not able to correctly identify which, you know, uh, this result is coming from which particular metadata and source. So that's about it. But there should be some uh, parameters and variables that we have to adjust for that. But I can look into this. So you can maybe try until this part. So if there are any uh, doubts that you have, please mention in the comment. And if you also figure out what's the issue that has been going and how to locate the source correctly, you can let me know. So that that's good as well. So that is all from my side and I'll see you in the next upload. Thanks for watching.